aren't I doing what I love? Why aren't I making a daydream or my daydream a reality? Um, and the answer to that is, you know, it's scary as hell. And uh, I think that these are some great steps that we can go through in order to kind of dig deeper and figure out what are the next steps or what is a step that you can take to get closer to that? So I can't wait to get started. So can you give us a little taste of some questions that you may ask people? Because I think for many of us, as I mentioned before, that we're thinking, what are we going to run towards? How are we going to do it? But then once you think about that, people get overwhelmed with all of the commitments they've already said yes to, and maybe even start talking themselves out of this saying, I don't have time for this. Who do I think I am? Or, I mean, get serious. This is never going to work. And so all that self-defeating talk seems to come forward quicker than we like to admit. So maybe you can share some of strategies that you use to get us started. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it's totally normal to have those fears and to have those limiting beliefs circling around in your head. And my advice would be to take small steps. So that's kind of what we're going to dive into today when we talk about these questions. Um, it, because taking small steps, I think, is a really important part of this. You know, even looking back on my journey, I really knew that I didn't want to take the corporate route of, you know, climbing up the design ladder and, and you know, working for someone else. I wanted to um, make my dreams a reality, not someone else's. And, you know, so I, I started with baby steps, you know, I started working as a freelancer, um, in my spare time when I was doing my nine to five. And then I eventually finally took the leap and I quit my nine to five and, and now I run my own business full time. So it's not, you know, you don't say here's my daydream and then boom, it happens. I think that the progress and the journey is really important. And it's important for people to realize that, don't get caught up on the end result because the journey is the most beautiful part, in my opinion. Mm, I love that. I love that because I think so much of society conditions us to get there. And sometimes the process of getting there, as you mentioned, is so much more beautiful and insightful and enjoyable. Absolutely. Great. Um, so let's get started. I'm ready. <laughs> do it. Okay. So the first question that I'm going to start out with, which is pretty much the obvious, is what is your craziest daydream? And I'm talking go sky's the limit. Like for me, it was starting my own design studio. And I thought that that was totally nuts because I thought that that was something that I would be doing five to 10 years down the road because that's what everyone else was doing. So I thought that I was crazy for doing that. So that was mine. I love that. I think mine is, you know, I want to host retreats in exotic places and invite amazing women. And I've started that locally, but I have aspirations to do something in Hawaii and Ireland and Brazil. I think there's so many places in the world to visit and I want to travel with fantastic women. Absolutely. That's so incredible. Oh my gosh. I can totally see you doing that and I will totally be joining. That sounds like <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so your cra so number one is craziest. So what's your craziest daydream? And is it something you've had to been thinking about? Like a lot of times people have things they've been thinking about for lifetimes. Do you and some people might have more than one thing. So how do you narrow it down? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you know, my best advice would be um a lot of the time we'll think about like, okay, what was your like what did you want to be when you grew up when you were a kid? Um and that doesn't always a lot of the time it doesn't translate to what they want to do now, but sometimes it does. Some people have these dreams that they've held on to since a child and they mm -hmm. thought that it was totally nuts or impossible to go after it. So um, you know, we'll make a list of things. We'll explore them and kind of like even write bullet points within them, you know, thinking about how you can execute those ideas. So, you know, what are the first steps that you can take for each of those? And sometimes it includes experimenting with more than one idea and seeing which one you gravitate towards or which one you wake up each day wanting to work on. And that can kind of clue you in on which one to go with. I love that. I love that. Okay. Number two. Absolutely. So the second thing is, what do you need to learn? You know, for me, um, when I decided to launch my own business, it was I needed to learn how to be a business owner. And although, you know, I've been very blessed, I've grown up with a business owner my whole life. My dad has a company and I've watched him do things and I've been able to kind of um, get his, you know, the way that he talks to people and, and, you know, how he keeps his clients happy and stuff like that. But there's so much more to it. There's filing your LLC, there is your taxes, there's, um, you know, building a social platform and building a community and 
booking clients every month. And so those are the things that I really needed to figure out and learn um, to move to the next step. So I'd love to hear yours, uh, JJ. Well, I think the things I need to learn is how to cultivate the right equation of content, location, people, and cost. And I've been dabbling with that now for two years. I think right now I don't want to overcharge people. And so I always end up probably taking a little less just because I want to manifest the event. And I even have to get around my own self talk and saying, you know, it's okay to kind of cover all your costs and people will come if they want to. So I think it's a little bit of self-talk. It's definitely watching how other people that are five, 10 years ahead of me, how they're doing it. And then baby steps. I don't think, you know, you're not going to see me hosting an event in Hawaii next week or even this year, because that's a plan to get to that I have to build up to doing. Uh, but I'm up for the challenge and I feel like I'm watching a lot of people that are ahead of me in the process of what's working and what's not. And then I'm building my to-do list. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that is a great strategy and it's very similar to the one that I took as well. Yeah, I'm a big believer and I feel like right now I tell people, look on LinkedIn, look on Facebook, look on any of the social platforms and find people that are already doing what you want to do. Absolutely. Because, you know, it, it, a lot of people don't think that they can do it, but there are other people just like them and just like where they started doing it. So that, you know, that just shows you that you can do it too. I think so too. And if it's something that's nagging at you for a while, it's generally what you're supposed to be doing. Sometimes you just have to get out of your own way. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot for me is just the fear, the fear of an, um, Jen Sincero in her book, she talked about, let me just see what I can do. Instead of having all these expectations of what has to happen, just dabbling in it just to see what you can do with it without putting all these expectations. It's a strategy that has really helped me move in the right direction. Yes, I love her so much. She's incredible. I've read her books and they really changed who I am and my mindset around things. And I had uh, I had a similar mindset with that because, you know, when I went into my, uh, when I launched my design studio, I had just gotten laid off. I think we had talked about this on IGTV and, um, I, I was like, okay, now what? Like, I'm like, let's just try it and see what happens. There is no better time in my life than now, which was a year ago to try it. I was thankful and I had a little bit of a savings built up. I had everything in line ready to go to launch my business. Business and I'm like, I could either run away from it or I could just, just start and try and see what happens. And a lot of the time, if you throw yourself in the deep end, which is something that I truly live by, you're going to learn how to swim, you know? And I think having a coach sometimes to help you do that too is so important. I know you have shared with me at various conversations, the coaches you have used, you are a coach. Like, I think sometimes you just need somebody to say, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yeah. Absolutely. So that actually takes me right into our next question is who do you need to partner with? And I don't want people to get too much into their heads about this. You know, I, I know that a lot of people don't have the budget for a coach, um, but there are still other people that you can talk to and connect with um, versus just having a coach. Now, for me, I did hire a coach um, in the beginning of last year before I even knew that I wanted to um, launch my studio last year because you know like I said I was just going to revamp my freelance business and then my daydream design co was farther down the line and my coach really helped me believe in myself that I could do that and and she asked the right questions of why aren't you doing this and she was so right um, but I also think that in addition to business coaches that can be a really great guide the people around you can also be a good guide as well and I, I mean I know that there are a lot of people who have negative people around them who are going to say, what are you thinking? You're crazy. You can't do this. F those people. <laughs> like, don't listen to them. Silence them and, and focus on people and surround yourself with people who are where you want to go. People who inspire you, people who are doing what you want to do or in a similar boat. And maybe they can help you and mentor you into um, how to get into it, at least give you the first steps of how to get going. I love that. I love that. I think, you know, I always call it like your advisory board, your your group of people that are going to help you. And if you can find people that are ahead of you or have like your dad had the business knowledge of setting up business, maybe a neighbor, it doesn't have to be 
people you've traditionally gone to. I think thinking outside the box of the skill set you need and then asking people, do you know someone who can help me with X? Yeah, absolutely. And there are a lot of people too, like even if you did want to invest in someone, it doesn't mean that you have to invest in a three-month coaching program or a mastermind right away. There are a lot of people who offer like um, weekly consultations or even daily consultations, or you can just have one with them and really just like find your footing a little bit. Or there are also other people who are just starting off like me. So, you know, I work with a lot of people who are, don't really have a ton of a budget for coaching where my design services are priced way higher because I have a completely different target audience for that. And, you know, I think it's really important to just do what you can with what you have and where you're at. Um, and that will put you on the right path. Yeah, and I just would add to that is ask the universe for what you need. So if you're like, I need someone who can help me file a business or can help me get a bank loan or can help me edit my document, I find that if I ask the universe what I need, the next day I do it before I go to bed, sometimes when I wake up in the morning, and then I spend the whole day looking for my answer because it generally appears. And even like when I was putting my book proposal together, I was going to use this other team to do editing. And then I woke up one morning and I was like, oh my gosh, Denise does editing. Like sometimes when I wake up, the ideas are present right when I open my eyes and I generally follow up on them because I know they were given to me as a next step. And so I'm constantly like a an investigator in my own life. Yes, I think that that's so important. A lot of the times there is someone in our life that can help guide us. And it's almost like I find that people sometimes take their fears and they block that person out or they, they forget because, you know, you get so focused on one thing. Um, it's hard to, for, it's hard to remember to, you know, look around you. I think that that's really important too. You know, when you're trying to find what you need, look around you. What do you see? Who are the people that you're connected with or who are the people that you have talked to in the past that maybe you haven't talked to for a while? What are they up to? How can you guys help each other? And that's, Another thing that I think is really important, too, um, is, is being able to give back to someone, too. So maybe you find someone who can help you and you can help them in a way with your skill set or something like that. And then it just becomes this endless connection that you have forever. I love that. I love that. And I always tell people, you know, people um, come to your point that you could have it forever. And there's people that come in and out of your life. It can be very transient, too, so that don't get caught up if a relationship only lasts a few months or a year, you know, for your business. If people come, it's like it's like the angels send you resources as you need them. And then other people may need those resources. And that person might leave unexpectedly and it has no reflection on you. They just have other work to do. Right. Absolutely. I'm totally a believer of uh, there's a saying that you meet multiple soulmates in your life. And I don't necessarily mean in a love relationship, but I think that soulmates are more than just, you know, have, being married or, or being in a um, in a relationship is there are people you meet in your life that are there for a reason. And, and like you said, they don't always stay. And I think that it can be tough to let that go sometimes, but you focusing on you and your own journey, those you can see and look back that those people were there for a reason. And I can even look back to people that I was friends with. I mean, I was, it's kind of weird that we brought this up. I feel like it's like a universe thing. My mom and I were just talking the other day and she was saying how she didn't love one of the friends that I used to have. And I was like, but mom, if that, if that girl hadn't come into my life, I wouldn't have gone to the school that I went to. I would not have been where I'm at now, maybe I would eventually get here on a different path. But yeah. that is really what started it is meeting this person and having her show me this school that I fell in love with. And that is what started my journey. And that's a prime example of someone coming into your life and then leaving, but then being there for a reason. Oh, gosh, I know. When I look back on my life, I can see so many of those intersection points. And now I start off so many of my calls like soul sisters, because I do believe there is just so many soul connections happening in your lives at different times. And you don't know why, you don't know how, but you know that there's a purpose and a reason for them. And it's, it's really, it makes life so magical. Yeah, it really does. And that's, I think that this, it's a perfect way to describe it is I think that this journey is magical, the ups and the downs. And, you know, that's something that I want to stress. It's, it's not always going to be up. You know, you can't have the ups without the downs, but the downs can be so important and they help you grow and they help you progress on your path. I completely agree. And a woman that I worked with out in Utah, Alicia, she said to me, don't always, don't position life like I can't believe this is happening to me. She says, think about your life like this is happening for me. 
for me. So what am I supposed to learn? What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to do things differently or look at things in a new way? And I feel like if you think of everything as a gift, even the crappy ones, uh, sometimes the biggest lessons come in the crappiest boxes. So true. I love that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. So awesome. So you're such an old soul and definitely a soul sister of mine. So as we're wrapping up this discussion, you know, how to, what, what other advice or how would you have people take it, take this information from here? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so my last and final point for this is I think let's think about what is one step you can take between now and a gold date to get closer to your daydream. Um, and, and take a moment to write those out, you know, and, and set a goal. So maybe, you know, by next week you want to have something done or you want to reach out to someone and then maybe by um, next month you want to have the first step done or, or a couple of steps done and just really writing out those baby steps that you can take to get to that bigger goal is going to make it feel less overwhelming you know and it's so satisfying maybe being able to check off those little things and it doesn't mean that you have to take it step by step Sometimes you'll start doing something and you'll check off two boxes and then you're like, wow, this is incredible. And another thing to realize, too, is sometimes it takes a little bit longer and that's OK. I say don't get super yeah. tied to your deadlines because you're on your journey and you're on your path for a reason. And sometimes you got to slow it down. And I think that that's totally OK. I love that. And I think it's just moving towards it, moving towards it. And sometimes you have to decouple existing choices before you can create space in your schedule. To, to do something about your dreams. And I think you're exactly right. You just have to start working towards it because so many of us are our biggest enemies and convince ourselves that now is not the time. We all know somebody that have big dreams that never acted on them. And, you know, life is short as we're seeing before us that now is the time to get going. So hopefully everyone listening today will write something down they can do by next Friday. If you want to share it with us, we'd love it. And, you know, Holly, I'm sure people are going to get to want to get in touch with you and follow you. So what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, absolutely. So you guys can, I'd say the easiest way to get in touch with me is to go on my Instagram. So if you look up the at, at daydreamdesign.co, you can shoot me a DM, you can comment on my post. And there's also a link to my website on there, which is daydreamdesign.co. Um, and those are the two best ways to get a hold of me. You can check out the contact tab. Um, hit me up on Instagram, whatever works for you. I'm here and I am excited to meet you guys. Well, I absolutely love this time together and thanks everyone for joining. We'll follow up with your questions and hopefully you'll follow Holly on Instagram and continue to watch uh, our great live Facebooks that are sharing great strategies for women that aspire to have more, but not sure where to get started. So thank you so much.